Hello everyone, hope you're all well and safe. As you look throughout your state, there have been many great boxers that change the way we look at boxing. Almost as an art form of fighting that boxing has become in this world, and especially in the United States, right? Now, when I was eight years old, I remember watching the first boxing match with my father and mother. It was the fight of Oscar De La Hoya versus Manny Pacquiao. At the time, I had no idea who Manny Pacquiao was, and in fact, I was actually going for Oscar De La Hoya because he was a Mexican fighter. And the most famous fighter at the time. Now Manny Pacquiao has become an icon, especially in his hometown of the Philippines, where he is from. When he fights, the entire rate in the Philippines completely drops, and the streets are silent, and he was even in Time Magazines as one of the most influential people in the world. Hi everyone, my name is Roberto Carlos Varela. Today I will be talking about Manny Pacquiao, also known as Pac-Man, and the reason he's the greatest boxer in the history of the sport. Now, have you ever wondered who has the most world titles in the history of boxing? Who would you say has the most titles at the top of your head? There have been many multiple champions throughout boxing history, but none have even come close to the multiple championships that Manny Pacquiao has won, which is in eight divisions. From weight class to weight class to champion, coming up all the way from flyweight, which is at 110 pounds, to welterweight, which is at 147 pounds. If you know boxing, you know that it's very impressive because many boxers just stay at one weight class, but his first title was a flyweight. According to Tony Arama, a journalist for uh, Stadium Talk, he states that then he went on to become the first man to win eight divisions titles, welterweight, junior weight, uh, featherweight, junior featherweight, junior middleweight, lightweight, uh, lightweight, junior flyweight, and flyweight. All these weight classes make Pac-Man the greatest because he is so far ahead of everyone that it is a joke to at least not put him in the conversation of greatest ever. While going through all of these weight classes, he did not just beat boxers with no name. When first coming up, Manny beat uh, great fighters such as Juan Manuel Marquez, um, Eric Morales, uh, Ricky Hatton, Marco Antonio Barrera, Miguel Cotto, uh, Joshua Cloudy, just, uh, just to name a few. The, the wins and losses. Many argue that Manny Pacquiao can never be the greatest boxer because he has indeed lost, especially by way of knockout. I would argue that it is a very weak argument considering, considering that the great Muhammad Ali once lost to Joe Frazier by knockout. So why he, why is he still in the greatest conversation of all time? When Mike Tyson was at the peak of his prime, he even lost to Buster Douglas, a name many did not recognize at the time. If these boxers were not disqualified but by the specific reason, then why should Manny Pacquiao be when he got knocked out by Juan Manuel Marquez? The people and the experts should have taken into account the recovery of the knockout. Many people have said that Manny Pacquiao would never return to the boxing ring ever again. Others said he would never be the same again. Eight years later, and he's still fighting amongst the most elite, even at his older age. Not all losses were in fact indeed losses. In the sport of boxing, there will always be three judges at a ringside that score the fights and who they believe the winner is throughout the round. If you know anything about boxing, you know that all the fights are not always scored properly, especially in that sport. That was the case with Manny Pacquiao, who has a record of 62 wins and 7 losses and 2 draws. Two of those were terrible decisions. When Manny Pacquiao first fought Timothy Bradley, the scorecard was so bad that it was called the crime of the century. According to Kevin McRae, a report for the Bleacher Report, he states that when the third card was read, giving Bradley the decision victory, it turned into absolute shock and disbelief. McRae 2012. This was really, this was really, this made really much corruption stand out from boxing. Other examples of bad judging was against Manny Pacquiao when uh, Jeff Horn was an Australian fighter who also was given the decision over Manny and also another big rigged fight and then another one back in the first fight with Juan Manuel Marquez which was a draw so those are just a few examples he should only have at least three losses in the resume but because of the decision he ha it has so many people saying of that amount he cannot be the, be the GOAT in the conversation boxing has a reputation of fighters only lasting a certain amount of years in their prime the older many gets the more respect he deserves. Many fire fighters uh, retire at an early age and are definitely not expected to be great anymore at all. Now back in 2019, Manny Pacquiao turned 40 years of age and he fought Andre Broman. 
a young well-known fighter that had a good run, and Manny beat him with an impressive fashion with a unanimous decision at age of 40. Yes, at age of 40 years old. Many boxers don't even make it past 30 years old. Even legendary fighters never made it past 30 years of age. Imagine that. In the following summer, Manny Pacquiao went on to fight a very hungry and young Keith Thurman, an extraordinary boxer with a great background, but was also 10 years older. But Manny was also 10 years older. According to Gregory Ford, a journalist for Give Me Sports, he states that with the victory, Manny Pacquiao became the oldest welterweight champion in the history of boxing at age 40 for 2020. The style, that, that, that's just crazy to me. Like, who, who, especially in that sport of fighting where you're getting your head banged back and forth, there's just not many that become champions past 40 years of age. Now, another thing that I would argue, that style of fighting, fighting takes its toll on the body because of that style. You're more reluctant to hit, which ages your body in a way compared to a defense fighter. Now, according to J.J. Ryder, a drummer's, for now boxing, he states that Manny Pacquiao has been active for 25 years and is the only fighter in history of boxing to hold a world title in four different decades, right at 2020. To put that in perspective, he has been fighting longer than I have been alive. Now in conclusion, Manny, <coughs> excuse me, Manny Pacquiao has been a living legend for many years. Many people argue for other boxers, of course, but to me, all these reasons that I explain is what makes him the greatest fighter over everyone else even though he still has his flaws now Manny Pacquiao is not a perfect man he's not even the perfect fighter he has flaws both inside the ring and outside but as much as a demigod as he is now he is only really human King 2012 no one could question his level of greatness in the ring no one can ever question it the entertainment that he brings to the ring all his world championships that he earned from a young age to his longevity on the ring to all the eight belts that has no one has ever done and the closest is five keep that in mind Keep that in mind. Eight, eight world championships, and the closest one is five. Three more off. Three more off. That's something that probably won't ever be done again, and we'll probably never see again. Thank you. Have a good day.